Hi, now I'm going to talk about PEMF and science and what you should keep an eye out for when you're researching PEMF information. Let's start with the fact that there are thousands of research studies about PEMF. Some are good and some not so good. More and more appear every day. This can get confusing quickly because some research focuses on using PEMF to treat specific conditions. Some of those are resulting in actual FDA approval. In addition, every different PEMF equipment manufacturer says they have scientific studies to back up their sales claims. There's more research than any one person can possibly evaluate. So you've got to focus on what's important to what you're interested in, namely a PEMF system for home or office use. And when you do that, it turns out to be pretty simple. The truth is that there is real science behind pulsed electromagnetic field therapy to help you make your decision. In fact, thousands of legitimate research studies, studies you can depend on, prove pulsed electromagnetic field therapy works beyond the shadow of a doubt. Those research studies, like any genuine research, and the kind of research you want to look for, is done by scientists who are entirely independent of any manufacturer in well-designed, placebo-controlled investigations and are published in independent, well-respected scientific journals. They provide the remarkable results you've already heard about. The serious science about PEMF started when the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, needed to figure out why astronauts showed physiological and psychological deterioration when they were in space. They discovered the astronauts were in orbit above the natural Schumann resonance EMF field of the Earth. And their research clearly shows that only certain kinds of EMF works effectively. First, it must be low frequency, below 30 hertz. The natural field of the Earth, the field that astronauts in space left, has a low frequency around 7.83 hertz. It makes sense that PEMF devices should be close to that. Second, it must be low intensity, below 400 microtesla. High intensity EMF can actually be harmful, not better. Third, there are particular waveforms that work best. Square waves are the best for healing. Sawtooth waves are the best for overall health and wellness. Sinusoidal waves are not as useful as either square or sawtooth waves. Other research documented by Deepak Chopra shows that when the frequency corresponds to the natural brainwave frequencies, you can go into a natural state of relaxation or attentiveness through a process known as brainwave entrainment. Still more research shows that certain other frequencies are good for things like nerve regeneration, bone growth, ligament healing, small blood vessel repair, and other tissue repair. They can be used in a PEMF system by letting them ride on the primary sawtooth carrier frequencies. Despite all the confusion about science caused by different manufacturers, you really only need to be concerned about three things. Frequency below 30 hertz, intensity below 400 microtesla, and the use of sawtooth and square waves. Make sure that any PEMF therapy device you use conforms to them unless you are under the direct care of a licensed medical professional during the PEMF treatments. It's fantastic if your PEMF system also produces brainwave entrainment frequencies and the frequencies to repair specific tissues and organs like the IMRS does. And the IMRS is the only PEMF system that has both sawtooth waves for overall health and square waves for regeneration and rebuilding of tissue. For more specific information, check out the website imrshealth.com.